Hello, I'm Clint Ace Networker. I want to welcome you to this video where we're going to be talking about spanning tree. What is spanning tree? Why do we need it? It's this typical level of questions that you might get with a protocol or a technology in any realm, especially in networking. Why do we need spanning tree and what is it? So what I want to do is I want to start with kind of a set of layer two devices. We'll just say switches at this point. And these could be in a segment of your network. They could be in a certain building on a network campus. They could be just in a, a local area network by itself. But just trying to draw a router here. Let's say we have five switches, and we're going to use these five switches as an example. And they are all connected to this single switch. The, this fifth switch is connected to your router, which goes out to your internet connection. This is just an example. But why do we need spanning trees? So spanning trees is configured on most, if not all, of your Layer 2 devices, usually on Layer 2 switches. And spanning tree is has the sole purpose of doing one thing, and that is to prevent physical loops from existing on your network. Now a physical loop can be a big loop connection. Let's say we inadvertently run a cable from this switch to this switch and we create a loop here on these five switches. That's really bad, and I'm going to get into the details as to why loops are bad in just a second and why spanning tree is needed. But another case is you might connect inadvertently two cables between these two switches or two cables between these two switches and you are in essence creating physical loops here. Spanning tree wants to prevent these loops and here's why. Because when you get a broadcast in on a switch, let's say you have a workstation down here and it's connected to the switch and it sends an ARP request in. That's a broadcast what that switch does is it takes that broadcast and it sends it out every other interface than the one it came in on. If it has multiple connections here, it will send that broadcast out to all those other connections, all those other devices. In this case, we just have the one other switch connected, but it sends that out here. And this switch does the same thing. It gets a broadcast in here and it says, hey, I've got another connection here, I'm going to send it out here. This one does the same thing. It sends it out here and it sends it out here. And this one does the same thing. It sends it out here. When a broadcast starts on a network, this is a non-designated, non-specific MAC address. A switch will do that, a Layer 2 device will do that every time. It will replicate that out and broadcast it out. That's where the term comes from. When you create a loop, a physical loop in your topology, what will happen is these switches will start sending that same broadcast in to the same circle repeatedly because every time they receive a broadcast they broadcast it out the other interfaces. And this happens over and over and over again. If you start getting more than one broadcast you can get what's called broadcast radiation with a loop on your network you get broadcast radiation. They start going in a circle over and over and over again around this loop and broadcast begin to dominate your network. Other network traffic like say you have other workstations, you have other devices on your network, you might have a printer up here. These are all connected. They can't communicate on the network because why? All that the network is taking care of when you have a loop is broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. They're dominating all their traffic. In fact, they will essentially lock down your network at some point. So that's broadcast radiation and spanning tree is developed or was developed primarily to handle when these physical loops are detected. So spanning tree says, okay, I detect a loop here. Now, you want to have spanning tree running on typically all of your layer two devices, all of your switches. Spanning tree said on this switch says, hey, I detect a loop here going back here because I send out what's called a BPDU in spanning tree. Sends out a BPDU, it's kind of a test packet that it sends out. Sends this out, this interface, and it gets the same BPDU back on this interface. 
and it says, hey, I know there's a loop there because I sent it out here and it managed to come back in on this other interface of mine. So I'm going to do whatever I need to do. I'm going to determine the cost of these connections and I'm going to say this one has the highest cost so I'm going to block traffic to it. I'm just going to turn it off. That way that loop will no longer exist. If that happens before these do, or if it doesn't happen before this switch does, this switch determines the same thing. It says, hey, I see a loop here. I sent this BPU out from my, uh, myself here, and it came back in here. So I'm going to block this interface, because this one seems to have the longest connection back to, and we're going to get into a root switch. A root switch typically is the one connected to your router, uh, the one going to an internet connection, an external connection from your network, the one that's the most important. 